We're taking a deep breath. <sighs> We're lucky here to have the CIA director, Michael Hayden himself. He's here with his Koran and his gold star mother. It's good to have him here. It's been a while. But we are lucky enough to be having a story, a short story, and then a useless conversation about Hillary Clinton. No, I'm going to convince Neil. No, 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 tell your story first. Okay, it's about five or six minutes. Before. Okay, go ahead. And you were in Israel too, yes? I was, yes. So I'm going, you'd be proud of me, I'm going to a peace conference in Israel. Uh-huh. This was a while ago, right? In the uh, early 90s. Okay, early sponsored 90s. Sponsored by Tikkun, which means tikkun? to heal, oh, yes. repair, and One world. world. Yes. yes. Heal, heal the world. Mm -hmm. And during a break in the conference, my mother, mm -hmm. my gold star mother, mm -hmm. said I should go, she had told me before I left, go to the Dead Sea, because the water there will help heal your back. Oh, good. So I get on the bus. Your mother was looking out for you. Yes, okay. always. No way. I get on the bus and I go to the Dead Sea and I'm confused. There seems to be two sides to go to. You know those huge choices? Yes, big choices. And yes. I don't really understand the Arabic or the Hebrew well mm -hmm. enough. So I go to the left side and then I want to go and get healed my back. Mm. So my mother said so. Mm. And I noticed everyone seems to be Palestinian there, but I'm cool, I'm there for peace. Mm -hmm. And, but cool enough to watch my book bag mm -hmm. with my wallet mm -hmm. on the lip of the sea as I'm lying mm -hmm. and healing it back. So I'm always watching it. Mm -hmm. So in all as well. Mm -hmm. And you don't think you know that. Yes. Oh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling the healing. Yes, like an isolation tank. And then I get out and, and I notice people are covering one another with mud. Mm. And um, a young Palestinian comes up to me and says, you want mud, mud, healing mud, mm -hmm. heal you. And I say, oh my, the mud too. Mm -hmm. And so he puts, he very kind, he puts very kind, puts mm -hmm. mud all over my body. Mm -hmm. But he said, your eyes too. Oh, and I say, okay, I'm going to really close my eyes just for one moment, you know, mm -hmm. to be healed all through and through. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I wash myself off, watching my book bag carefully, mm -hmm. and then, and then go to the book bag, and there's no wallet. Oh, no wallet. And I think to myself, Michael, mm -hmm. you know, there's a. There's a, there's a real struggle between Palestinians and Israelis. Yes. You can't just be, I'm mm. here for peace and everything's mm. going to be fine and I love you. And I, so I walk over to the Palestinians. Because mm. I think when I have that one moment of covering mm. my eyes and I say, I'm missing my wallet. Mm -hmm. And they're kind. They say, oh, you're missing your wallet. Let us help you find, find, find. They go looking, I think they're making fun of me. Mm -hmm. And then they, we can't find it. And then they sit down and I said, now if you give me the wallet, you can have everything that's in it. I just need the stuff in the wallet. You can have all the money, all the money that's in it. And they, a good move. they don't answer. Oh. And I just stand there and I say again, really, you can have all the money. I just need the wallet and the cards. You know, I'm a stranger in this mm -hmm. room. And they, they say, you know, they shake their heads. Mm -hmm. And then they file out, all of them, mm -hmm. this must have been eight, nine, and go into a van. Mm -hmm. And I stand in front of the van, inspired by Tenement Square, mm -hmm. and say, please, you can keep all the money. I just need the wallet. And they back away. Go. Whoa. So I um, asked the bus driver, since I have no money, would you please take me to 
Jerusalem and he mm. does mm. go to my YMCA and mm. I'm tired and I first have to call everybody, you know, missing social mm. security card, mm. missing, missing um, even um, identification. Mm. And I had a little money in my room, just a little, mm -hmm. to get by. And I get up in the morning, it's, and after calling everybody, and it's time to check out to go back to America mm -hmm. without all my mm -hmm. ID. Mm -hmm. And I think to myself, well, it's been nice here, and I leave a, 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 a um, tip mm -hmm. to the clerk. I think you should do that. I didn't know, but mm -hmm. I did that. And after I give him a tip, he reaches under his desk and says, oh, while you were out, a um, Palestinian bus driver said that someone had left this on their seat and it said that you were staying at the YMCA and he brought it here. Wow. Wow, so you got your wallet back. And I take my wallet mm -hmm. and open it and all the money's in there. All the money's in there. Yeah. Wow. And so... I had blamed mm. these very nice people. Oh, but you'd let you dropped I it on the bus. Left it on the bus. Oh. Well, let's take a deep breath. Mmm. Well, you're apologizing to these Palestinians who you blamed. Yes, I am. Good. That's a good thing. We're, this, is, this is a moment of truth and reconciliation. It's more than uh, They were kind to me. They were kind to Above you. Above and beyond, the, they, this Palestinian bus driver returned my yes. wallet with all the money in it. Wow. Out of his way. Yes. Well, people can be nice. That's a good story. It's a story of the goodness of humankind, the possibility. And the blaming. And the blaming, yes. The inappropriate blaming and judging. Oh, the, the, yes, but you've grown up since then. You're a better person today than you were then. Oh, wow, this is from Neil. This yes. Is, he doesn't give these compliments. <laughs> He's a little, yeah. Oh, no, no sirree, Bob. Mmm. So now I'm going to convince Neil. You're going to see it. Um, well, first, we're going to have a moment to consider the koan that this system, the epi-system that we live under, has thrown up a choice for us. It's a koan. It's Tweedledum or Tweedledee. And it's a koan that if you participate in this koan, you lose. There's no right answer. There's no, you can choose Tweedledum, who's dumb and mean, or Tweedledee, who's nasty. Nasty and self-satisfied and who recognized the Honduran coup and who hid her emails better than, than Tweedledum. I have to say I would rather see if there's only one choice for most people I hope that those most people make that one choice, even though this would be the first cuckoldess in the White House. The first what? Cuckoldess. A cuckold? You know what a cuckold yeah, oh, yes, is? A yes. cuckoldess. Because she was cuckolded, and then her husband was impeached. Yes. And the reason that she is now in front of us is because she didn't say anything. If she come out and said, my husband is a cheating slob, he might have been impeached. 
He so she be, didn't do that. It wasn't Pete. She mean convicted. He might have been yes. He might have been yes. Yeah. I think. Well, he was. Uh, there was an impeachment hearing. No, he was impeached. impeached. The House voted to impeach him. The Senate is the jury. Oh. Um, okay. All right. Well, I guess you know more about that. That's good for you. One point for you. You got a point. No, but I love what you're saying. Mm-hmm. There's great truth in what you're saying. But if you were in Germany in the early 30s, or in Italy for that matter, or Russia now, we'll, we'll leave out Germany. If we, I mean, if someone was running against Hitler, which there were people, Hitler won that election in 1932, mm -hmm. would you have voted for someone to stop Hitler becoming elected chancellor. It will depend on the someone. I'm going to vote for Jill Stein, the Green Party. She, if you listen to her, she's actually talking about the banks. Yes, I understand. She doesn't. I do understand. She hasn't been at Goldman Sachs and made $200,000 for an hour of speaking mm -hmm. three times. Wow. Three times. Would they take us for just, would you go for? I'd go for ten thousand dollars <laughs> And I would, I, anybody who knows, who knows Jamie Dimon or Lloyd Blank, fine. Just tell them I'll do it for ten. I'm cheap. Yes. If anybody wants a sellout, I'm cheap. Ten K. So how come you're so angry at Hillary? She got more than Well, me. she got more than me. <laughs> yes. And because she was married. Oh, you've been married? I have been married. Yes. And maybe maybe I'll get it from I'll get it from I'll be Marivified in Linda Land. So uh, but I'm serious, the the I, I do I did vote for Just Time myself. Oh, good. And in some ways you can in Massachusetts, because Massachusetts... I am. Massachusetts is going to vote for Hillary mm -hmm. anyway. But I hope, I hope, or I'm afraid to ask, if you were living in Ohio or Florida, w would you tell those people to vote for Jill Stein? I would, I because, because I think that the whole Hillary campaign and the way she lied to Bernie Sanders people about being against the TPP and now Terry McAuliffe, who knows her well and in some ways speaks for her, has said that, oh yeah, she'll find a way to, to, to vote for it and bring it up again. So she was lying. We and don't know that. Yet. We don't know that we yet, but, we have to but she hasn't disavowed Terry, what Terry McAuliffe said. She has No. And also Deborah Wasserman Schultz, all those emails got leaked and the cheater. She was a cheater. Was she in the, uh, was they to her? No. Were they to her? The emails, no. They, she, they were, some of them were from her, yes. From Hillary too? No, no, from Deborah Wasserman to other people. How can we undermine, how can we undermine uh, Bernie Sanders? They really explicitly said those words. Yes, well, they had words like it. Yeah. It was obvious. Uh, and, wait, finish. Yeah, yeah. So finally, it got so unpleasant that she actually resigned. And what's the first thing that happens? Hillary Clinton hired her, hired this person who had violated yes. her trust in being neutral yes. chairman of the Democrat. Now, she hired her to run her 50 state campaign. I don't blame her. Just woman will be there's probably no. Well, you might not blame her, but I do. Yes, I don't. She um, says, all these things you say, uh, there's much truth in them, but you're not worried that this, um, the co-author of Donald Trump's um, autobiography, said that he was um, 
a habitual liar. Tony and, Schwartz. And a sociopath. I think he used yes, that word. Yes, I know. He and did. We, and we've seen him do the And he has. He's, he's doing it now. And what he's doing, and he's an admirer of Putin and, and Mussolini. David Duke. David, well, maybe not he's an admirer, David Duke. but he hasn't disowned him. He, he, has no, he hasn't disavowed. No. So aren't you, it seems to me that Donald Trump being elected president might be the end of the world as we know it. I don't think so, because no. I, I think he'll be ineffective, because the president proposes things. And then the Congress, which has been divided and will continue to be divided, stands in his way. He's, he doesn't have, even of Republicans, he doesn't have the complete support. So I think his impact will be muted. I'm not for it. I'm the, I wouldn't want him to be president. And I the, hope he's in not. And in the FBI and the CIA and appoint people. I, I don't feel that much better about Hillary being in charge of the FBI and the CIA. She, she ordered the CIA to support the Honduran coup. You know, she was the Secretary of State. Yep. She had a she lot ordered of them to support it? She, oh yeah, well afterwards, after it happened, the United States could have turned back the coup if they said, no, the, the Honduras is so dependent on the United States. Yeah that if the United States had opposed the coup and said, this is a coup and we support democracy and there's a, demo a democratically elected president and this coup is illegal and we won't recognize it. Obama anything. did not say that either. No, Obama didn't say it either. Well, these are unfortunately convincing arguments. But I'm still... Uh, terrified, actually. Um, I don't think what you said about the president. The president can do all kinds of things, martial law. I think he can. Can he decide it himself? We don't know. Or if he needs the vote of probably needs Congress to. Well, I mean, it's because so much is happening secretly. I mean, any president could theoretically invoke aspects of the Patriot Act, which would allow them to do a lot of things yeah. that, that are already being done. Yeah. Surveillance is, I mean, the people, peaceful protesters are being infiltrated by government agents. They were when we were young, Vietnam, anti-Vietnam. Still, yes, and nobody's ever been prosecuted for doing exactly what the Constitution says government authority should not do. They prosecuted the CIA man who revealed to the world that the CIA was torturing people and put them in jail. Yes, that's who, that's mm. who's been prosecuted. So they, they do use the prosecution. They do use prosecution mm. in, yeah, in exactly those ways. So you and, and so I think this is the time for not getting so involved in that, but for grieving that the choice is such a, that at this crucial time that we, we're probably over the line with respect to climate change, for cataclysmic, catastrophic, holocidal climate change. And that's what, and what, what's required at this point is a core of people who recognize that if we continue going on the trajectory we're going, yes. we are dead mankind walking. So if Hillary was running against Adolf Hitler, you would you say what, and you, and you were voting? Wait, she's not running against Adolf Hitler. Those are stupid comparisons. No. I'm afraid that this man... Uh, Hillary will do, she'll approve the TPP, she'll, 
she won't do much on climate change. In some ways, if Hillary wins, there will be a lot of people who will, in some ways, feel, but much more so, much more than I'll be involved. There'll be a part of me that'll be relieved if Hillary wins. But that this is not a time for relief. The Brexit has just happened. And so the European Union, which in some ways was much better on, on actually doing things about climate change and, and holding up the Paris Accords, it, that's, all, that's all being, being pulled back because the European Union is breaking up and it's just an excuse for the United States to continue to not prioritize climate change. And climate change will be the thing that will be the center of gravity of extinction of the species. You really want a president who is so divisive? Aren't you afraid that the lives that we're living now, these great lives in Cambridge, will be... They're ending. Those lives are... We... That is the grieving. This is ending. Why? Because we have already put so much carbon dioxide in the air that we are in the process whether Hillary or Trump, either one, either one, it makes no difference at all with respect to climate change. If either one gets in within their four-year term, we will not do enough to make the changes that need to be made. We'll continue to burn coal, frack gas. Hillary's for fracking gas. She hasn't come out against a ban on fracking either. I have two very brief stories that will change your mind. Yeah. <laughs> Number one. It better be very brief. They, they are brief. Okay. In New York City. Okay. Turn of the 1900s. Mm -hmm. They didn't know what to do about the horse manure in the streets. It was mm -hmm. breeding pestilence, insects. You couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they had a, 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 a committee to study what to do, and they came up with nothing. Mm -hmm. You needed horses to get around, and mm -hmm. horses sh shit. Mm -hmm. And then, very briefly after, you had the automobile that changed things. And no longer was New York City in danger of, of disease um, from the horse shit. Number two. They were running out of whale oil in the middle of the 19th century, you know, Moby Dick. Mm -hmm. And they said, how on earth are we never going to be able to light our homes? Darkness is coming upon the world because mm -hmm. we have no, we won't have enough whale oil. And of course, electricity comes. And Thomas Edison invents the light bulb. So I think the same thing is going to happen with climate change. Scientists are going to discover, they're experimenting now with things to put in the atmosphere or in the water. And humanity, not going to happen. humanity as, as always, will, will triumph. Not going to happen. It's, it's points of view like that that scare me more than anything. This isn't like New York. This isn't like whale oil. There, there is, in fact, wind energy, solar energy. The, the progress has been huge. Yes. But there are vested interests who have made it impossible to actually deploy more quickly. There are, there are countervailing forces, the coal the coal states and the coal senators and the coal companies are fighting rear guard action. So you really are the voice of no hope? The voice of, no, it's not no hope. I think with enlightenment, with taking a deep breath, Cohort, a cohort of 
36 enlightened people, if they induce their 36s, because everybody has a different 36, and they induce their 36s to be in reality, that only a complete rethinking of who allocates resources in this system. Mm -hmm. We have a system yep. for allocating resources and it's not working. And it's not working in such a major way that neither Hillary nor Trump will touch even the surface of having to say how can the most humans survive and live as well as possible? That would be possible if there were people who were capable of saying, no, I don't want the 1% to have the power to allocate resources. Well, I'm disappointed at how eloquent and powerful and thoughtful your arguments are. And I wonder if you can allow yourself to grieve at the seeming hopelessness, because it's only from there, from the no hope.